we start by maybe saying, I don't know if you're from Grimsby yourself or... I was actually born in Kent Street, which is off the dock. I know you know it, but Kent Street, I mean, it's, it used to be a thriving street itself. It was terraced houses both sides, but all back to backs. And uh, there was, uh, that was in 46 when I was born down there, just after the war, luckily enough, I missed that. But we, get, we got to play in all the bomb buildings that was down there. But you said that about every third, fourth house was bombed. And I was as kids then, I, mean, mm. I, I was there till I was about four year old, I think, in Kent Street. And we, uh, we used to play in, the, in, in all this. The rough bit. It was a thriving street then, there was pubs, and the fish shop, fish and chip shops, and all, all the rest of it. And it was a, and the grocery shops, I remember the grocery shops at that age. And the dockers. Yeah, but it was all there, it was a thriving, what was, what housings and shops was still, was still a thriving community then, but that was Kent Street, which is just off Freeman Street there. A lot of people don't even remember. Yeah. And the original pub down there, one of the pubs anyway, that didn't get bombed was the Honest Lawyer. It's now in Lady Smith Road. But the original one was in Kent Street, I remember it. But yeah. That was the uh, where I started. So basically, as I said, everything round there was revolved round the docks. You either worked on the dock or you went to sea. Mm. Them days. But I started then in '61 uh, as an apprentice joiner, and I said it was uh, my first day. You've seen the letter, first day, and uh, I got set up there. And uh, it was a company that was small company. But he started off and uh, ended up moving into plastics. They started to produce things like uh, like the old filleting troughs they used to have on the docks. And uh, they used to have, uh, they tried to develop a fibreglass one, a fancy fibreglass mm. one and all the rest of it. If you remember right, that they did do some for the ice house and for coal salt and tanning that was down there. Yeah. They did, no, yeah. I think they did orders for, yeah. the, for the ice house to try these yeah. out. And they used to have one show outside, and there was the beautiful white interior. These these filleting. I mean, there was. I mean, there used to be galvanised tubs they used to use on the pole too, and they were so badly rough. In the winter time, they used to freeze over, and they used to have to break the ice and all that to, to carry on with the work and all the rest of it. And uh, there was rough old tubs, but these fiberglass ones was. The looks, the look special, but they never took off because they were just too fancy for them. <laughs> so, uh, but, but they went into that. They went into small parts for uh, uh, tractor parts and things like that. This is off the dock, so you start to uh, develop away from the dock, if you like, fish. with plastics and fish. So we're getting away from that, and that's hence we was there about three years, I would think, and then three or four years, and then uh, we moved into King Edward Street. Which, uh, it was while, while he was on the, the dock in it that you met up with George Pasternak and he was, Ted uh, Colbrook, he Terry was a, Hope and all those crowds there. He was one of the old Polish uh, refugees I think, yeah. but he, he, he was like a mould maker. And uh, we used to have the joiner shop, they used to make the wooden moulds. And then this pole he used to come in, he, he, he had a fine art of, of finishing these moulds off to make the fiberglass things mm. from them. The fiberglass, outboard motor covers and all sorts of things they used to make but it developed from the joiner shop downstairs upstairs it was like this building we were Whittaker's it was down cross street and uh, it was a three-story building no and, uh, toilets it, no toilets it was the only toilet block was further down the road towards the ice house itself and it was it was like an island in the middle of the like a crossroads a crossroads cross street but there was like a there was like an aisle in the middle, and the gents toilet sat right in the middle, and everybody used to use that. Hmm. I don't know whether other companies and that, but they must have all been struggling for toilet hmm. facilities. And there was no washing facilities or toilets or anything in these buildings, but it was three stories, hmm. and uh, the bottom two stories were like the joinery shops with all the machinery, and then the top floor they used to use for all the plastics and fiberglass and stuff like that. But the uh, what used to tickle me was our manager, Malcolm Smith was in a wheelchair. He could never get upstairs. So every every year or something like that, or six months, he'd have a photographer come in to go upstairs and take photos of all the facilities upstairs just so he could see what was going off. He could never the one to lift, there was nothing yeah. up there. There were just two sets of steps, wooden steps to get up to the top of this. Amazing place. man he was. Malcolm very, Smith. Very clever. 
he, he, was, he was like this in his wheelchair and he used to have a thumbnail out here and that thumbnail was his was his equipment if you like you could turn a page you could do mm. anything with that thumb yeah brilliant really brilliant. really clever man but going back to this George Passionate Paul, he used to be a rough old boy, but he was clever at what he did. He was like a mentor for me. And uh, <laughs> but he used to like his fish cakes. And and he'd spring them on me any time. I didn't get it every day, but every now and again, it'd come to dinner time, and he used to say, "Right, I want you. Uh, I want a fish cake." Oh no, not a fish cake. And I used to have to go up to the ice house again. My only really involvement with the ice house, but I remember going up to the canteen up to the ice house, and I have a feeling it went up the stairs. I don't know whether you've seen the ice house set up or anything, but I had visions of this canteen being up, some, up a flight of stairs, but it was like an open canteen for the workforce, but anybody could go in and buy the fish and chips and things like this. And he used to send me up for these fish cakes at dinner time, and I used to eat it, because I used to have to queue, a big long line of queue, when you got up there at lunchtime, and then I used to ask for one fish cake, please. <laughs> and I used to take it back, and that's it. He used to have it with his bread and butter, and that was his that was his lunch, and mine ruined, if you like. And I used to wake <laughs> that. But he was a craftsman and a half. But that was my only real involvement, other than the place being like it was at that time. Passed every day, didn't we? I mean, I got the whistles. That's all I got. That's but it was, but to, I to, to be honest, every the, day to get down to his works. All the streets mm. then. Yeah was like a high street on a Friday and a Saturday. It was buzzing, thriving all the time, with people buzzing about and transport, traffic, and all, all to do with dock works mm. and thought like that, and, and all, all the works involved round, round the docks. You've got all the barra repair people, and uh, all the, like I said, the fish mill was right opposite us in Cross Street there, mm -hmm. wasn't it? The fish mill company. And uh, we're, the cafes, the Sally's cafes. All the offal from the fish used to go into this place. You can imagine what the place used to smell like all the time. But as you, as you come past the ice house, there used to be a little tobacconist, I suppose, a one room shop. And they used to go in there and they used to buy just maybe one wood bang or one part drive, and he mm -hmm. used to split the packets. We used to do that as apprentices. Yeah. Well, we did to start with, I, I, I had another uh, pal, Peter Calladine, I call him. He's, he went into the RAF eventually, C sense and went into the RAF. And mm. uh, what he used to do on a Monday maybe, I'd, I'd go in, there used to be a little cafe next door to us, and I'd go in and buy five park drive in a packet. And we used to split them between us for the day. So that was two and a half each. Mm. And the next day he'd go in, but we'd get them on tick as well. We'd never actually be paying cash for these, we'd be getting them on tick. And then the next day he'd go over by five, and then the next day I'd buy five. So I was buying them about, I don't know, it would be about ten, ten part drive between us by the time the end of the week come. Then at the end of the week I have to go in and square the bill up for whatever we'd bought. It was basically only just mm. for a few cigarettes. <laughs> but like I say, them days everybody smoked. Everybody smoked. There weren't many that didn't. But uh, yeah, there was, there was... I remember the first, first week's wages I got. I started work, I got the job, started work, got the first week's wages, I thought, can't believe this, got a wage packet, and I headed off the dock, and straight opposite the dock entrance there at Ryby Square was a fisherman's outfitters, and they used to always sell these fancy fishermen's jumpers and stuff like that, and I was straight in this shop and bought myself a jumper, my wages, my full wages, whatever I'd got it was, it was only, a, it would only be over a pound or something like that, but I bought this jumper, I was pleased as punch with this jumper. I took it home and I got crucified. <laughs> My mother said, you've started work now, where's your lodgings? <laughs> where's your lodge money? That jumper. Oh, I've got a jumper, man. I don't give a damn about your jumper. When you come in next week, I want to <laughs> see some lodge money. And I'm only taking about a quid of 50, yeah. 150, something like that. But she was looking for lodge money as well. <laughs> so that, uh, I, got, I got an air bashing for that. But yeah, that was, a, as I said, me granddaddy himself, he was uh, born on the dock. Born on the dock, more or, well, born, he was fishing all his life and could never ever swim. And then he ended up uh, mm. taking a watchman's job when he retired. And we've, I've actually got the clipping somewhere, we're trying to look yeah, for the clipping. I can find it somewhere, somewhere in the house. But he actually drowned in the dock. 
he used to take the dog, he used to take the dog, a big old station we had, he used to take it with him every night. The dog come home on his own one night and he fell in the dock and drowned after a lifetime of fishing. His man alerted the police because he said the dog had come home without him. And so she alerted the police, you know, where mm. was her dad? It's in the 50s. That's me dog, look, that's, that's me. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. I've got the stripy jumper on, I think. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Light sugar. Rocky, big Alsatian we had. So the, the, the Alsatian was waiting, was it on the ducks? And he used to take him, he used he to used take him with him on his shifts every around. night. And then it came on, it, it used to come home with him, but it came home on its own one night, just came home. Just early morning and the, his mum alerted the police. You know, where, where's my dad? Yeah. Dogs come in without him, and that's how they found him. And, uh, yeah, after a lifetime of... Uh, but he could never swim. It's like a lot of the fishermen never ever did get to learn to swim properly. But then again, if you ever fell in the sea then, it was... Uh, you weren't going to swim anywhere, anywhere. Not in that North Sea. But like, say, them days, it was all... You either, you, you either worked on the dock, or... You yeah. went to sea. And my brother went to sea, my father went to sea, my granddad went to sea, and I think I escaped it by working on the dock, if you like, and apprentice join. Where did that come from? <laughs> and I remember at school, the, the, the last thing they asked me is, what do you want to do when you leave school? Elliston Street School. What do you want to do when you leave school? I said, no, I ain't got a clue. What do you like doing? Oh, I like joinery. Oh, well, go be an apprentice joiner then. That was it. I just went on a mission to look for an apprentice joiner. <laughs> And them days, work was plentiful. Mm. And I got two interviews, one for this, apprentice joiner, and I got another one down Cromwell Road, and it was a mechanic. And I, had a, I got both jobs, and I had a choice of both, whichever I wanted to take. But them days, you started at 15, you were straight in, started at 15. Four foot ten I was, four foot ten, and I weighed six stone three. Mm. And they all said, why didn't you be a jockey? <laughs> I was that small. But yeah, that was the ice house itself. It was the only real inv involvement was the uh, the, the canteen. Educate, wasn't it? And me get them whistled at them, and because they always had an open section up in the walls where they, they were slinging this stuff in and out, and the blokes used to line up along there. But it was always thriving. The place, the roads up to it. You know, you you took mm. your life in your hand just getting across a road there with mm. all the the lorries it's and so stuff busy. like that was flying road. about. It was so busy. And the road was covered in. Fish line. <laughs> mm. I stuck to Ireland. Mm. But uh, yeah. And I saw some over the roads. But they it was used, just, it used just to have uh, yeah. no Pick. caretake and because there was no help from safety at all. You know, the wagons would pull up and they'd just slung it on in the boxes. And if it was spilt, it was spilt. Nobody mm. bothered to clean it up. Mm. One of the big places we used all the time was, was, was the coal, salt and tanning which was on Fishdock Road, was around the corner from us, but it was within walking distance. It, it was, was just, just up the road from the ice house. Our ice house was there. And, on Fishdock Road. And the coal salt and tanning was sort of like that across yeah. the road from it. But it was, uh, it, I don't know, it was a massive building. It's one of the biggest uh, warehouses for anything to do with mm. on the dock. It was anything you could buy, anything from nets to ropes to mm. any hardware stuff at all. And uh, we used to get some... The lads used to send me in there for, uh, I'd get a chitty from the lads, say, go, for, go get me a long rest, go get me some half inch holes for washes, or I'd get these wreckies to send me across this cold salt and tanning joke. Terrible there was. All sorts of stuff I used to get sent for. Oh, mahogany welding rods <laughs> was another one. And the, the rest of it was the shopkeeper say, you let us sit down there, son. I'll go see what we've got in the back. <laughs> I just sat down there for half an hour before they saved me. <laughs> yeah. They got into bother one day because the manager found out. They all got bothered. But I said this three-storey building, it was horrendous. And the, uh, the only toilet facilities they used to have in them places is... Uh, they used to have, uh, in the joiner's shop, they had a pile of shavings in the corner the men used to use. On the top floor, they used to have buckets. And I always remember getting sent home once because uh, they'd fill this bucket. They used to use the buckets up the top. And I was told to empty them. 
and there's two flights of stairs to go down to get rid of these buckets and I refuse this one particular day. I said, I'm taking them. I said, I never use them. I go to the toilet down and I don't use them. I said, I ain't empty them. I stood my ground and I got sent home. The foreman sent me home. Well, you better get yourself, you're not going to do your job, son. You better get yourself off home. So they sent me home and the manager sent for me back. And there was an apology went round. I should never have been put in that position, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. And uh, it was all forgotten about. Mm. But that was the, the toilet facilities in them places mm. then. I mean, there was, there was none for us. There was mm. Lee and Kathy Twig. Um, you can't open it as a. Just pause that, so. Yeah, we can.